guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. A couple of fun things before we jump into the questions. Number one, I am waiting for a call. I have my phone on next to me from my mom or sister. They're supposed to receive their first load of spring color today. So I'm hoping to run down there and get in on the action. What kind of stuff do they bring in? Well, hello. <laughs> Hellebore? Oh, geez. Pansies, violas, primrose. There'll be some herbs and some grasses and things like that. So I'm excited about it. Can you plant that stuff this time of year? Well, I'm looking at the 10 day. There's no freezing temperatures and all the stuff they're bringing in are cold. Okay. Like cold crop sure. sort of things. It's so. not like the ground is frozen. Right. Yeah, we could plant whatever we want right now. If you Could you put something like that out in a container? Yeah. Would it do okay right well, now? Well, you know, if you have a, a night, because, you know, it'll probably happen where we'll have a few more nights that are freezing or around freezing. Bring it in. A lot of them. No, a lot of them will look like Ooh, in the morning and then they pick back up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the anyway, more you know, I'm excited about that. Also, we just recently, like yesterday, yeah, <laughs> got the Mesto sprayers in our shop. So if you go to gardenanswer.com, you can order this one. This is the best handheld sprayer I've ever used. And you guys know, or those of you who've been watching our videos for the last couple seasons, I've been using this. Yeah. They just randomly like sent it to us like two years ago yeah. and it just became a product that you kept using. You know what I like about it? It's lightweight. So it doesn't hold a tremendous amount of water, but when you're doing seed trays, it's not like, I don't know, I've tried the big, big pump sprayers, you know, and it just like, it worked okay, but it wasn't ideal. This one, I usually like pump it 10 times and that lasts for an entire section of shelf. Mm. So I can do like four seed trays and you just push this button like that. And it's not hard on your hand. Also, let me open it. You can spray it upside down, right? That's what I was going to oh. show. So the the little tube, you know, that goes down to the bottom, instead of being like a really rigid tube, you know, to where you have to keep the container upright in order for water to go up there, this is weighted. So you can face your jug, your bottle, any way you want, upside down, and that tube's going to find the water because of that little weight on the end of it. So you can 360... Is that the right term? I mean, you can use it like this. Yeah. Got to pump it first. <laughs> yeah. yeah <I> suppose. <laughs> you just let all the pressure out. <laughs> I did. I'm like, oh, that was a bad example. <laughs> How do I retract this? Uh, the thing about these, I've seen a couple of you who have bought these. See, upside down spraying. Um, there is a max fill line. If you fill your water above that line, there's not enough space for the air pressure to build up for the water to want to spray out. So anyway, be mindful of that. That's something that I've done. I'm like, what? This is not working and I don't have another one on hand. So anyway, it's in our shop. So I'm excited about that. I think that's it for announcements. So let's jump in to our videos from this past week. The first one was pruning the tree hydrangeas, the two, three that are on the west side, kind of by a raised bed garden, at, and then at the end of the brick walkway. Uh, and I went through the whole process of that and how I usually trim those a little bit more aggressively than I trim my hydrangeas that are just in shrub form. And then I removed the stakes from the trees by the pond. So it wasn't a super intense day in the way of like big projects, but the stakes in particular, they're these giant bamboo stakes and there was four to five on each one of the trees well, on the service berry trees, uh, depending on how many trunks they had. And then there was one per each birch tree that we had out there. And they just, I, I just noticed those because they're lighter in color than the tree bark. And then they have that little green, you know, like nursery tape on them that kind of just, especially in the winter, you can really notice it. Uh, but we usually leave staked trees, like if it comes with a stake. Don't you usually take it off when you plant? Sometimes I'll remove them. Um, in this case, I didn't just because we planted them, what well, was in July? It mm -hmm. wasn't like super late in the season. I could have done it in the fall. We typically don't leave them on for too long, if at all. I seem to remember us talking about it and talking about taking them off shortly after they got planted. Uh huh. Well, I, I don't know. We probably did and it just didn't happen. And it's so easy. It's just a matter of getting that ladder out and getting it done. Um, and I don't know, is it in this last week's lineup? Were the lights still up? I think you guys were working on that the same day. Yeah. You guys were working on the lights on the basketball court behind the pond, but it, they weren't down yet. Like that was the next step for you guys. And mm. I got the trees done first. Yeah. So anyway, we didn't, weren't able to see, see that light free until a little bit later. But anyway, um, Monette, Monette said I ha or Monette. Isn't it Monet? Mon well, it's M-O-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Oh. So I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, but I've never heard that. 
yeah. name before. Um, I have a stake it's on like a, just to throw you off. <laughs> I know. I have a stake on a white oak planted last fall, 2023. Should I remove it this spring? Yes. Or wait until fall and give the tree the extra time to root in better. Well, I guess it depends on what kind of stake you have. Like, was it the stake, like the ones I removed that are just along the trunk? Most of the time, those aren't going to provide a lot of support um, if they're in the root ball of your plant, you know, if you're just putting it in. If it's a stake that was installed outside of the root ball area, you know, and it's staked up that way, uh, usually we don't stake anything newly planted unless we start to notice a lean. Then we'll stake it, and in that case, we'll leave it on, what, six months? Yeah. Like a growing season and then take, remove it. Or uh, <clears throat> at least move it every six months. Yeah. So like take the strap and put it on a different part of the tree. Yeah. So that it's not, you know, rubbing or, um, right. you know, digging in at all. The big trees we have installed, the Malad, Malad tree farm trees, uh, we leave those sticks on for one. One to two years. One to two years. Those are big big old trees though yeah so with a lot of weights so we've got to make sure to keep those if you got a 20 foot tall tree with okay. like a fresh root ball yeah like that could tip over <sighs> uh amy said i planted snowdrops for the first time last fall and they're popping up like crazy with a week of 50 degree days do i need to cover them no nope they like cold temperatures sometimes they bloom like under the snow you can lift snow and see the snowdrops blooming and since that video because we did look at some blooms um, that were happening around the garden. We have so much more action already. It's looking so pretty. Uh, Kelly Ireland said, who taught Benjamin that I'm watching you signal? <laughs> and I, I did. So when he was real little, before Samantha was even born, I think he was like two, it was like a game we used mm -hmm. to play. After bath time, we'd go into his room, get his jammies on, and then um, he would want you to like sit in the chair, which is on the opposite side of his room, and close your eyes. And then he'd try to sneak up on you. And then you'd open your eyes and he'd take off running and I'd go like this. And it'd make him belly laugh. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, so that kind of stuck with him. <laughs> and what part of your video was against the law for you to get a ticket and threat to be thrown in jail? Oh, <laughs> the kids. They said, put your hands up. Oh, yeah. You're going to jail. And uh, Samantha wrote me a ticket. There was a couple times where Benjamin was like, put your hands up. He'd have like a little toy gun, like a Nerf gun or something. And then you'd put your hands up, then you'd go, boom. <laughs> like, <she's> <laughs> Like, that's like, not how that works. That's against the rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, user said, love this channel so much. Thank you. I have a question about setting up a new garden. For the places that do not have the raised beds but have the gravel, what do you do for weeds? Do you do the same thing as you do for your driveway or do you put down the landscape fabric? In our raised bed garden where we have the uh, gravel in between our raised beds, I did use landscape fabric and I would not do it differently. <laughs> I would do that again. Um, we use the DeWitt Pro landscape fabric and we use it sparingly. The only parts or places we have it on our property are the floor of the greenhouse. When we have that kind of scraped out, we put landscape fabric down and then gravel because I did not want to have to be spraying herbicides in a green greenhouse environment. That just seems like a bad idea. So we've dealt with very minimal weeds in there. Um, we did it in the pathways in the raised beds. The raised beds themselves are open to native soil. So roots could go down. They don't really do that, but they could go down into native soil if they wanted to. They're not going to be impeded by anything. But the walkways, again, uh, we rarely have to do anything for weed control in there. A little bit of spurge gets yeah, in there, much. but um, we don't have to spray hardly at all. Uh, and then the only other two spots, we used it under the arb hedge up here. Uh, because we had such a bindweed problem. And the same thing went for one side of the boxwood hedge in the Versailles garden, uh, because that side had a bindweed problem. And bindweed is one of those things that if you get it growing up in your hedges, you're never gonna get rid of it because you can't spray it. You could sum it up by saying anywhere under gravel or under permanent hedging. Yeah, but we don't have it under all of our permanent hedging. No, just some. Just some, yeah. So just where we had some issues. I think there's a place to use it and a place not to, for sure. I'm not black or white on most anything. But it is, I mean, like, it's a huge pain in the butt. If you're planning on having a flower bed, oh yeah, do not put landscape fabric no. down. Well, that's the thing. I think there's, like, applications to use it and applications not If to. you're doing a, um, like, a commercial landscape, you know, where you're just, like, dotting certain shrubs or something, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. But uh, not... You wouldn't, I don't know, putting it in a garden is just not good. 
Yeah. And also, if you are going to use it in applications like under gravel or in the hedge situations we've got, get the DeWitt Pro. Like, don't go cheap on landscape fabric because that's even worse. Hey, what are your thoughts on the, um, like, burning holes in fabric for, like, cut flower gardens or crops that you're, you know, doing every couple feet? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, people use them for uh, vine crops, I think. Vine crops, like... Like, um... Oh, oh, like pumpkins, pumpkins and things like and that. Pumpkins and watermelons, stuff like that. Just so that you're not having to weed, you know, all over the place. The thing about vine crops like that, the weeds are only an issue right in the beginning. And it, that's at the point where it's easier to get around the vines to manage the weeds with, you know, hand. We use hula. doing a large area. Yeah. Because you... by the time those vines put on enough enough growth they suppress all the weeds we don't have any issue at all with them for most of the season but i wonder if that's the case just because we stay on it in the early well, yeah some people sure. don't have the time yeah that makes sense um i don't know i'm on the fence about that sure because i know that it can be detri detrimental to soil but like in applications like you were talking about commercially I think you'll still have the camp who just says absolutely no landscape fabric anywhere. But I'm like, they're going to use herbicides. They're going to be putting chemicals in the ground to kill the weeds. Right. Or they could suppress the weeds. Like, what is the, what's the camp you want to sit in here? Right. Like, if you aren't pro landscape fabric in a commercial, then I would say you're pro herbicide. <laughs> I don't know. Because maybe that's what, that is what is going to happen. One. Well, they don't want either one, but that's not reality. <laughs> a little reality check here. That's yeah. not what people are going to do in a commercial setting. So you have to pick your poison. You change the laws. Something. Outlaw landscape fabric and outlaw herbicides. All of them. Olga said, I was lit literally staring at my hydrangeas today and wondering how in the world I'll figure them out. Thank you for the visuals. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, I actually, I, I did one take with my GoPro. It just is so bad at taking close up Yeah, it really is. Images. Why is the GoPro so bad at focus? I don't know. Like I'll show something in the ground and the background is in focus. It has like a minimum focusing distance of like two or three feet. Yeah, it needs to be back away. And when you need to see something small, I usually get my phone out. Um, so I did the second take and <laughs> tried to get some close up visuals. Um, can I take the same approach with my dappled willow? With your dappled willow, willows are so aggressive. Um, <clears throat> I would say that you could take your dappled willow down even further. There's not as much of an art, I guess, to, to willows because they just grow so fast, so fast. Jason said, how do you know when it's time to prune your panicle hydrangeas? Do you wait until after last frost? I'm in zone 7A and they're predicting another cold spell before spring arrives. Uh, you know, I think what, like on the Proven Winners website, and I've learned a tremendous amount from the growers at like through proven winners uh, what they recommend is to wait for the buds in the spring to start swelling so and you'll notice i mean right now uh, ours have started to swell because we have a lot of we've had a lot of warm temperatures but when it's still really cold out they just look like brown sticks uh, when the buds start to swell you'll see at the nodes so every little segment you'll notice the buds start to get bigger and they turn more green so they they recommend that you wait until that point because it's kind of a no-brainer at that point you can follow each stem down to a set of strong buds cut it right above that and then you can kind of shape up your plant based on where kind of the strong strong buds are and you also can determine which branches are dead and which ones you need to get rid of completely that would probably be the best time to do it i know some people who do it in the fall and then i just do it whenever it fits into our schedule so those plants are pretty tough they're like a zone three the ones that i um i think right limelights are like a three to nine oh. i want to say so they're tough and i really haven't had an issue Hopefully I don't this year. <laughs> I always I'm worried about that. Yeah. I just did. You guys will see probably before this video goes out. I trimmed all of our lavender back, like back, because I trim it back every single year. And every single year I'm like, oh, okay, this has been working for me for like 16 years, cutting lavender back this way, but it's not the recommended way. So please, lavender live, <laughs> so that I can say, look, see, you didn't kill it. <laughs> Terry said, is there health benefits to the trees if you plant three birch three trees together, or is it aesthetics? Aesthetics for sure. I often see it, so I wondered. Uh, there are certain trees that just take to planting like that better. I think you could do it with pretty much anything, and they just kind of respond to each other's growth and can kind of communicate in a way. And the only problem with doing that is that if you lose one, then you're gonna have kind of a wonky shaped Double birch. Double birch, which I think over time they would recover and start growing out because, you know, all of a sudden they'd be exposed where they, you know, that third one died. Um, I think they would fill back in, but it might look weird for a while. Uh, so that's really the only downside, I think, to doing that. 
but service berries. Uh, I have a spring snow crab that's a multi-trunk, uh, crab apples, birch trees. What other multis do we have? There's a golden rain tree mm -hmm. out here. I really like um, multi-trunks. Um, I hate trees where uh, it comes up as just one mm -hmm. and then splits right at the base so it's like, like one trunk it's like one foot up that and then turn that looks like an accident waiting to happen doesn't it yeah and it just looks like someone pruned it incorrectly well that's how our elm tree behind the chicken coop was yeah like it kind of came up out of the ground and then they all branched from the same well most of the elm trees around here are that way because they were just wild they were and, wild yeah. they just grew up accidentally nobody pruned them and then they got to the point where People were like, oh, it's too big to right. do anything with now. Right. Devin said, so fun seeing their imaginations run wild, the kids. Question, do you cut back your hellebores? I clean them up. Um, I'm just about ready to get that done in our own garden. Some years they look better than others. Like they don't look horrible, the leaves don't this year. Um, some years they're like black and tattered and they need to be cut off. These are still pretty green, but they kind of lay flat while the new growth emerges from the center. So I usually just kind of trim around the center of the plant and trim those old ones off and let the new ones flush out. Uh, Chris said, I need to move to hydrangeas. Do they need to be planted high? Said Aaron. I don't plant my hydrangeas high. <laughs> I don't think uh, when it comes to most shrubs, unless you live in a well, really wet area, but mm -hmm. even then I think hydrangeas are okay with quite a bit of water. Yeah. Can I prune them before transplanting and when is the best time to transplant them? If you can dig them out and dig a hole right now, do it before they break dormancy and you can absolutely prune them before you transport them or right after. Um, and honestly, that usually helps when the plant doesn't, like the root system doesn't have as much plant to support. It can focus a little bit more of its energy on root system development. Uh, next video was making dried flower Valentine's ornaments. That was a really fun project. I wanted to figure out something to do with the kids and something that kind of reminded me of my own childhood. Uh, I don't know that we had a Valentine's tree, but we always had an Easter tree with eggs like that, yeah. that I loved. And I've done that uh, once. I think I painted a branch white and put some eggs in our landing. So I should probably do that again here soon. I still have corn stalks in our landing. Do you even notice that? No. Oh, it's like the perfect bouquet underneath that chandelier. It's like the perfect uh, shape and scale. Oh. A lot of that stuff just blends in. Uh, yeah. In, you know, it's it's actually can be kind of bad sometimes because there's projects that you need to get to or things that, you know, that need to be done and you just stop seeing it after yeah. a while. Oh, I see the corn stalks. Really? I see them every day, but I like them. So, Anyway, they were made out of salt dough, so it's flour, salt, and water, super easy. Roll them out, bake them low and slow, and then uh, let them cool, and then you can use Mod Podge to adhere some dried flowers, which some of the ones that I had on hand uh, came from our garden, and some I picked up at Joann's. In their clearance section, they had little sleeves of dried flowers for like $4, mm. um, and this was maybe two years ago finally found a use for those, <laughs> those flowers. I uh, actually just ran across them in one of our, my drawers. This one, yeah, it's like full. I've got a bunch of dried flowers and such in this drawer, uh, and I kind of forgot about it. And I opened it the other day. It's like, oh, I forgot I had all those. You can get dried flowers so cheap online. Yeah, you can. Like, I, the reason I know that is because Ken and I were talking about like, well, what if we like could sell some dried flowers in the store? And then we started looking up online how much it costs to get them, and we were below. Like, there's no way. It would be worth There's it. No way, it's not even close to being unless, worth it. Unless you guys would want dried flowers from our garden. Would that be? Would that hold any special <laughs> meaning to any You'd of you? In order to sell, like if we sold them at the same price as what you can get like on Amazon, say, mm -hmm. you'd have to basically have free labor. Yeah. Like you, it would have to just be whoever's doing it is doing it for the love of it, not be, <laughs> and who are you going to get to do that? Yeah, you know? no one. <laughs> uh, in my kitchen today said, if Benjamin wanted his own channel, would you encourage it? I don't think we would encourage it. I wouldn't encourage it, but um, I wouldn't discourage it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. I kind of have like a do whatever you want, but I would I would not push him toward it. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. I think I, if he told me he wanted to be a doctor, I probably would be like, "That's great. How can I help?" You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there are other professions that maybe I would I would push him a little bit harder toward mm -hmm. and I don't know why that is but well I think you want you want your kids to do something that they show interest in and that would yeah. make them happy um 
And also, That's the I biggest think, thing. I think you naturally want your kids to be successful and have a good job and have yeah. something that creates a stable life for them. You know, I think that you're apt or you're more willing or more likely to support that a little harder than yeah. if it was like, I want to go surf and make a profession out of it. You know yeah. what I mean? You're like, well, okay, but right. can you monetize that so right. you can afford your rent? Well, that's the thing about, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, prof like what we do, it's so, like anyone can try it, but not everybody can make like a career out of it. Just because it just, it's the same as like professional sports. You know, a lot of people try it. A lot of people play sports, but there's only a few people that, you know, make it to the NBA or the NFL. So it's, I think maybe that's why I would be a little cautious about him doing something like creating a channel. Cause it's like, well, there's, there's no guarantee that it would yeah. go anywhere. Right. Katie said, how did you miss Douglas joining you in decorating the hearts? He appeared to join you in your chair. So I figured, cause he did end up right behind me. He was laying behind me and he had all four of his feet on my back for a lot of that project. So I know he was in there, but I thought it was because the kids were in and out and we were in and out. And I thought he just made it in when the door was open. And then when I was watching the video back, I'm like, oh, that little sneaker, he came through an open window. Yeah. You could see him like, you know, moving carefully across the counter. He didn't knock anything over, but now I know that he can do that. And so I'm gonna have to keep those windows. Do you know, I liked it so much better this last year where we kept the greenhouse open most of the year. Most of the summer. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We had doors open and windows open. Just knowing that it wasn't, we weren't trying to cool anything right. down and just leaving the air. And it was also like a, like a really nice year too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of, bad. it wasn't too hot. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda said, do you think this would work with lilac or phasithia branches, forcing them to bloom? Do you think the branches would be sturdy enough for the hearts? Yeah, I absolutely think so. Uh, lilac, I, I've never forced a lilac to bloom. I don't know. I mean, have you guys? I've done uh, for Scythias and like uh, cherry, or not cherry, flowering almond uh, work really well for that. Apricot branches, uh, pussy willow. I think that might be all that I've tried, but lilac would be awesome. Those are pretty big blooms. I'm not sure how that would go. Sunshine Flora said, what varieties of flowers do you think press best for this? Uh, anything that would press flat. So a naturally flatter flower would be perfect. Um, things that are like thicker, have a thick center, uh, wouldn't be as ideal for sure. Uh, Demi said, great family time episode. Question, can you paint these before adding the flowers? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the world is your, your oyster. oyster. <laughs> you can, you can paint them. You, I thought about that. Like, should I dip them and like let them hang and like look? Like they're more like the Valentine um, conversation hearts mm -hmm. or, uh, but then I thought, nope, I need to keep these as organic as possible looking, but yeah, you could do whatever you wanted with them. And I actually gave the extras because I made several batches of them because I made one to try out just to see if, you know, the thickness and what would work the best. And anyway, I had leftovers and I just gave them to Samantha and Benjamin with a big bag of markers and they just colored on them. They had a good time. Uh, next question. I'm from the Netherlands and I don't know what one cup is. Is that about 200 milliliters? Uh, is a cup typically American? Yes, it is. Um, the, the conversion rate is on Google. Yeah. It says one cup is equal to 250 mLs. Somebody says 240 mLs. Somebody says 237 mLs. <laughs> It's roughly right around there. Cue the Pink Panther music when Douglas snuck in. Is no one going to ask where your rolling pin came from? It's genius. It is genius. That's from William Sonoma. And I don't know if they sell it anymore. I've had it for a long time. But the uh, rolling pin itself on the end, it has um, like a little screw in area where you've got these little plates and you can, I've got three plates, one that will roll out. Uh, let's see. Is it five eighths of an inch? One that'll roll out a quarter and one that'll roll out even smaller than that. So you take out the rings that you don't want it to be. And like in this case, I left the quarter inch one in. So you know that when you're rolling something out, once the little plates hit the ground on both sides or hit the table, that you've hit that quarter inch mark and everything is uniform. It still seems like you need the handles. Um, I don't, you just roll it. Hmm. Because there's a stop. I mean, it stops once it hits this. So it's not like you could put any extra pressure. I don't know. Like it yeah, doesn't matter how the, the pin rolls, you know. Sure. Anyway, it's super, super nice. I love having that. Sunshine said, do you find that the edges are rough after baking? Could you sand them for a more finished look? I can, can't wait to try these. Um, they're not rough. They kind of have like a little bit of a, 
like not a smooth appearance, which doesn't bother me too much. I'm not sure that sanding would, would help just because I think it's that consistency throughout, no matter where, like if you were to cut into it, which you couldn't after it was dried. But uh, I mean, you could certainly try to see if sanding it might reduce the appearance just a little bit. Um, I did try to paint Mod Podge into the sides too, just to see if that would kind of fill up some of those like little holes and it really didn't. So I don't know. Okay, the next video was taking down the tall lights behind the pond and a bunch of other stuff. So the tree, we took a tree out. You guys took a tree out. I was like very minimally involved in this project. Uh, I think the tractor did a lot of the work, but. Yeah, and somebody mentioned uh, that I should curl the, uh, the forks up instead of trying to pull because there's more, and I, I knew that. I don't know why I didn't try that. For what, like pulling the tree <clears throat> up? Yeah, so you're, uh, you're, you are you're have more curling power in your like bucket or forks or whatever than mm -hmm. you do lifting power. Mm -hmm. So if you get up there and then you actually curl it instead of lifting, mm -hmm. then you can pull things out easier. You rarely think of those. I mean, I rarely think of those things while I'm actually doing the project. And later yeah. I'm like, I knew that. Right. Why? Now everybody's going to comment that. Right. But I don't. It's like, yeah. Uh, so the light posts came down, the two fences at either end of the court came down, the tree came down. Which uh, Paul filmed, and I could never find the footage of him pulling out the fences on either side of the court. Hmm. It was just like a little It was in that envelope all by itself. I never I found it. I wonder if it ended up with Ken at any point. I don't know. Did it end up with you, Ken? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you could see kind of the before and after on that. And then the soccer goal post out on the other piece came out. It's nice getting all that stuff like cleaned yes, out. It is. That's totally my mo. Yeah. Is cleaning everything first. Yeah. Rip it get out. All the junk out. Uh huh. And then make it what you want. Yeah. Um, I am the whimsy. Said, will you need to lay down any weed suppression before you spread gravel, or will the gravel prevent the weeds? Um, so behind the barn, in big areas like that, we typically don't put down the landscape fabric. It's in areas that are more condensed and areas where we're going to have plant material, uh, where I don't want to be spreading herb uh, spraying herbicides. But back here, there's not going to be plants. It's going to be storage for gators stuff you know like that so we'll probably just um have it cleared out everything's going to be removed new gravel will go down and we'll treat it the same as we do our driveways which also do not have landscape fabric and we use the deadweed brew captain jack's deadweed brew mixed at the highest mix ratio concentrate mix the concentrate at the highest ratio you can which is like a 12 percent, i think mm -hmm. uh, and that usually does a pretty good job I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that when Chad is, comes out, he's actually going to dig down quite a ways. Mm -hmm. And he'll put, um, he'll put like really large crushed. Like more of a road mix? Yeah. Or no? Gravel down. And then he puts the smaller gravel on top of that. Mm -hmm. So it'll be so a, quite a rock layer before. Yeah, it's not that easy for weeds to grow mm -hmm. when you've done it right. Yeah. Susan said, what is Bethany going to do with the goalpost piece? I haven't asked her yet. You know, Paul told me something about what she was going to use it for. She was going to use it for like growing something up. And so they were going to cut it anyway. He did end up cutting it did and he? putting it on a trailer. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what he said she was going to use with it, but it was... I'll ask her. Yeah. I meant to ask her the other day and I completely forgot. Uh, B. Vire said, "Where was there a home on the Sanchez Ranch and they broke up the property? Yeah, I mean, it's the house that you can see on yeah. the other side of the fence. Someone also, I saw a question, like, did we buy the house? No, no we did not. He that wants was, us to buy the house. That was the, yeah. <laughs> he sent you a text after yeah, we did. did the deal for the land we paid and all that, you know, got, got it all buttoned up. And then he said something about like, are you, you know, do you want to buy the house? He said, you should buy the house. And, and I was we were like, like, I don't think we can even come close to affording that. And he just, what do you say back? And he goes, I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait for you. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I'll wait for you. I was <laughs> like, like, okay, well. I don't know. Yeah, so that, that large house that you can see sort of by the pond area, like through the pond area in that kind of corner, that belonged, or the land belonged to his house. However, the piece behind us that has the red barn, that did belong to our house, that the previous owners, so the friends we bought it from, they sold Salvador that piece. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of switched hands in yeah. the last, I mean, in the recent, recent past. Yeah, well, and I mean, really, the whole area belonged to our house. Yeah. I thousand mean, acres around our house initially so we're like buying back little pieces we of bought it. back what we can yeah pretty much 
Um, Meg Willis said, do you need to get a horse trailer in down that lane? No, uh, we will not. We've talked through that initially. We're not going to be doing horses back here, I don't think. It's going to all be up in the dirt lands. Uh, so the dirt lands now kind of is both sections, the original dirt lands and then the piece we just got where the, the soccer goalpost came out. Uh, what we're planning to do, and maybe do you have a picture of that sketch? Oh, yeah. Maybe we can maybe. throw that up on, on the screen if you've got it. But it's so like rudimentary i don't well, even want anybody thinking that's like going to be the final thing sure okay well let me just try to verbally explain it we're wanting to build a barn kind of central to the back side of the the property sort of in the middle and then there's going to be four half acre paddocks uh around that barn but there's going to be a central area right that's like um that's a, like a dry lot sort yeah. of thing and then the paddocks all connect to stalls so each paddock connects to its own stall and then they all connect somehow to the you've got it all they all connect to that dry lot area i don't know yeah it's really interesting and i think it's going to work out really well which opens up this back space because we were wondering too like how do we connect do we want the pastures connected how are the animals going to move from one side to the other when we rotate you know rotate what pasture they're in are we going to have to you know take them on the driveway to get to the other pasture is that what we really want so i think having the whole setup up there will make a lot of sense and it'll be beautiful. Look more pastoral up yeah. there, you know, and a nice one sweeping day. view one day. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a couple of years, yeah. my guess. Yeah, which actually makes me more comfortable because I really do think getting our infrastructure right is so important and making the whole process, like this barn, um, will have like f big fans to keep air moving inside. It'll have automatic waters. It'll have like all those amenities that will make the experience as pleasant and as, um, low maintenance as possible. Uh, and I like that idea. I don't want to jump into something because I've never had horses. Um, we had somebody leased our pasture, pasture when I was little. And so we had horses in our pasture for a time, but they weren't mine. Um, and I wasn't, you know, caring for them and caring for them over winter and that sort of thing. So I don't have a lot of knowledge and I really want to go about it slow. I don't want to jump in and then be like, why didn't I make sure that we had everything. I don't know. I'm, that's just my personality because that seems like a big jump. Yeah. You know, both financially, you know, like buying everything you need, the horse trailer, the horses themselves, you yeah. know, all the feed and making sure that you just kind of know what you're getting into. So anyway, Linda said, could you use a basketball concrete as an ice skate rink in the winter? Wouldn't that be fun? I talked about it. I don't think we get cold enough for no, long enough to make it work, enough. but we used to. Uh, Terry said, when did Aaron discover he had a talent for property development and how? <laughs> I do not have a talent for it, but I have learned um, there's like an art to doing it the way we do it because I never know what Laura wants to do. And she'll like, I can never I try to eke it out of you. And because I don't really know until it's you don't really I know. Do and so what I, I try to do is figure out how to get infrastructure in a position to where we can like easily expand in whatever direction we need to. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think really hard about, um, yeah, how to, how to make it to where we can trench from here to there without needing to trench again, needing to trench again. Mm -hmm. Like how do we do this one time? Yeah. Which is so nice that you think that way. Cause can you imagine the mess we'd have going if you and I both thought my way? Well, I've used the example. I feel like if you were going to build a house, you would build a house and be beautiful. And then uh, somebody would be like, how come there's no outlets? And you were like, oh, yeah, electricity. <laughs> it's like there's certain things on your brain, like you'd make it beautiful, but it would be like missing something really important. <laughs> plumbing. <laughs> yeah, plumbing. <laughs> Running water. <laughs> I didn't leave room for those pipes. <laughs> it's, yeah. just, it's just not I know. Uh, something that Details you consider. Details are just... You've come to me with ideas before, and I'm like, and I'm not trying to squash the idea. I'm just like, We've had how? many a conversation about that. How could this <laughs> even happen? Because most of the time I come around to your way of thinking, but I don't want my dreams squashed right in the beginning. So you let me flush this out <laughs> until I figure it out myself. Like, okay, this isn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I will go away with my idea. But I, yeah. I come at it like really enthusiastically when I get something in my brain. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes some of the people uh, in our city think the same way when they do projects around here. Mm -hmm. Like um, they'll they'll have an area where they're like, yeah, we'll plant this up and do this stuff. And then they won't run water to it. Mm -hmm. And it's like in our area, 
you know, you have not, to have water. Not everything takes a ton of water. Mm-hmm. You can plant a lot of like water wise things, but they need consistent water. Mm-hmm. And like, who's going to go with buckets of water to go water something once a week or twice a week or whatever right. it is or daily if it mm-hmm. needs it. So like, but people just get this idea of like, well, we'll just build it and we'll figure it out later. But that's not how it works. Right. It does not work that way. Right. Do you remember I was trying to like kind of horn in when they were doing the, they were doing a whole downtown remodel. They redid the roads. They redid everything. And I was kind of horning in with the city manager, who's not the city manager anymore. But, um, and I was like, hey, can we be involved in like planting stuff? And he was all gung-ho about it. And then we went down there and he was like, oh yeah, there's no water here. And they had just finished. And I was like, like you, how? you just remodeled everything. And, and created flower beds. And created flower beds <laughs> with no water. I was flabbergasted. I was yeah. just like, I can't. Like, we can't work together on And this. so that was how many years ago and there's nothing in them? Because they created these big bump outs. Like, you know? in the street. So it, like, took a, it gobbled up some parking and right. it makes turning hard. <laughs> but if they were full of gorgeous things, yeah. you'd probably feel differently about them. But just sitting there looking like unused space right. in such a high traffic area, yeah. like, that's the committee you need to be on. You would be an... You know what? I can't do it. I can't work. Um, There's too many people and too many ideas, and I can't. That's why I can't. I'm a solo worker because I just. There's um, there's like too many meetings involved where it's like to me it's simple. We just need to go do it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to talk about it because like right now nothing is being done and nothing has been done forever. So Mm -hmm. just let somebody just go do it. Mm -hmm. And like I yeah I've tried to volunteer. I've tried to like. Uh, contact certain people with different groups like hey can we plant some trees here like we'll donate the tree. we'll buy the trees we'll mm-hmm. do all this and it's like you got to go to like four meetings before you can go plant a tree somewhere mm-hmm. I, I don't have the time for that no we that's why a, stuff doesn't we could have done. a whole video on that subject I thought it'd be so easy I just thought I'd be able to find out who's in charge like text them yeah. and be like, Hey, can we plant some trees? You want to just show me where to put some and, mm-hmm. and we'll do it. And like, well, let's get these 10 other people and we'll talk about the kinds of trees. I'm like, no, we're just going to go get whatever your parents have yeah. at the garden center and plant a couple trees. Mm-hmm. So easy. Yeah. Broad said, who is Chad and what is his expertise? How did I miss his, this addition? Lots of hard work in this video. So Chad is our go-to uh, earth mover guy. Yeah. Is that what you'd call him? He doesn't work for us. He's just... Yeah, he's a contract. Like, he's got his own business. It's um, Steve's Backhoe Service. Yeah. Excellent. He does excellent work if you're local. Um, but he's just super, super busy. So... Yeah, so don't maybe call somebody. Yeah, he's busy, you know. <laughs> X out the company name. Um, he does such a good job. He's so nice to work with. And he's got all the mach- like the equipment. In fact, we have been storing a piece of his equipment all winter. <laughs> he came and got it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, um, it was like a big... Dozer. Dozer, yeah, that just sat out there for a few months. Um, but whenever we need something that requires bigger machinery or gravel being put down or you know proper bed preparation, that kind of thing for whatever lane we're doing or road, gravel road, he does it. And he does it fast. Didn't he call one time and he like lost a water truck? <laughs> It was his mom, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was like, uh, we can't find one of our water trucks. Is it at your house? <laughs> no. How do you lose a water truck? I think they found it. Yeah. But I think what they do is they, I mean, they go do a job and have to drop off equipment or, or whatever. And yeah. then that equipment is at that job and the trailer moves somewhere else to move some other equipment. So things are probably like... Yeah kind of spread about the land and you just got to make a few phone calls to figure out where it's at exactly uh but chad's dad steve he was the one who came and brought the water for his pond yeah they brought the water truck and filled up our pond next video was tearing down the chicken coop and planting onion seeds um so paul and bethany took after the chicken coop um in front of the red barn just beyond the basketball court and they did it in less than a day he told me he really likes doing those kinds of projects (laughs) he told me that too he said it was kind of fun like i was able to pull it down and then just pick it up in big sections but i I think that he really enjoys it. He gets to use equipment and it's just like, like, it's like satisfying to get done yeah. and you know, slick up an area. Yeah. It was satisfying to watch. Let me tell you. And then, uh, Samantha and I planted onion seeds and I planted one flat this year. I think last year I had four or maybe five flats of onions wow. paring it down. But I think I'm going to probably have just as many onions in that one flat that I did in maybe all five. You're not some... planting anything in the dirt lands this year. I think right? all I'm going to plant in there are vine crops, possibly sunflowers. Okay. That's it. 
Oh, good. I'm paring everything down. Right. And we're going to do everything in the cut flower garden because there's other things I want to focus attention on and other things that I want, you know, Paul and Bethany to be able to focus on. It was a, um, like they kept up on weeds just around the general area. And Are you going to focus on the area in front of the house with the, the fountain? No. You're going to leave that bare I'm going to leave it until year? the inspiration strikes. My inspiration struck somewhere else for this year. Did it? I haven't started the project yet. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. You guys are going to love it. I hate being one of those kind of people who just like hints at things. Sure. But I am hard hinting right now. <laughs> I don't really want to say what it is yet, just in case I don't decide to do it right away. <laughs> Still back out. Yeah. Uh, going Green Mom said, what happened to planting less onions this year? I know. So what I was saying is that I think I'm going to have as many in that one flat because Samantha was putting so oh. many seeds. And I don't want to discourage that. Like, are they, I can, they're not expensive, I can are thin they? thin them out. No. I buy them in bulk down at the at my parents' garden center. Um, the candies are a little more expensive because they're pelletized, um, and we did plant heavier on those because they were last year's seeds, and pelletized seeds don't have a very good shelf life. So, um, user said, "Will you be painting the shed the same as your house?" Uh, oh, the barn, the red barn back there. We talked about doing white. Yeah. Kind of like it red, and I know I know there's both camps, but. It just, it reminds me of my parents' house, the house I grew up in. We had a, they have a red barn still. They have two red barns. And to me, it just feels like homey. I know you hate it. I am going to try to strategically. Block it. Place trees yeah. where you can't see it. And maybe one day it might just go away. It, it might. It's going to be an excellent storage barn for now. Yeah, for now. It's I great. doubt it'll go away because I have all kinds of things I could do with that. I want ducks one day. You're going to use that for ducks? Maybe. How? Well, just, you will see. It doesn't make any sense. It'll be a whole duck sanctuary. And you will love it. Linda said, best helper ever, Samantha, is such a cutie. I'm wondering how often, what type of fertilizer you use on your onions. I've heard they're heavy feeders. Is this true? It is true. So typically, I will go in with, like, um, the liquid grow fertilizer when they're in seedling form. And do I have any of that in here? It's just a, it's a green bottle. We maybe can flash it up on the screen. Um, we're getting it in the store like Are we? this week. It, in oh. fact, when this video goes up, it's possible they might be on the store. Okay. Well, maybe we can put a picture up. It's a green bottle liquid. Um, and I do the fertilizer once they're up and growing a little bit, I'll do half strength fertilizer and do like once a week or once every other week. Uh, and then we bump up to full strength once they've put on a little, you'll know. I mean, they kind of look really wispy and little when they're just coming up and then they get up a little bit bigger and then they're, they're, um, leaves get really quite thick and you can start fertilizing normally. When I plant them out in the garden space, we do land and sea compost and biotone starter fertilizer. Whenever we start a new crop out there or plant a new crop, the soil is always amended with that stuff. And I would like to say that every year I go along and fertilize them again with garden tone. I did last year and I got a, an amazing crop of onions. But most of the time I kind of forget the in-season fertilizing. As long as you prepare your planting area with some good stuff, I feel like that's getting you most of the way. If you go along and side dress them midway through their growing season, we harvest onions. I want to say it's sometime in July, maybe. So if you go in sometime like June-ish and fertilize them, I feel like that's a good idea. You get a little bit bigger bulb size out of them. Uh, Tito's Revenger said, we all know they're going to install a pool back there, right? Aaron wants to. <laughs> I totally want to. I don't really want to at this point. It's just another thing to... Another thing to have to be able to swim. My parents have a pool. They're 10 minutes it's, from us. Yeah, but it's 10 minutes. It's 10 minutes. And it's a good excuse to go hang out out there, get out of the house a little bit. I suppose. I don't know. It's not the same, though, when you're sweaty and hot and you can just go jump in the pool quick i suppose you got a pond you can jump in yeah it's got a bunch of algae well, which right we're gonna now. fix soon yeah <laughs> yeah i think the prettiest place to put a pool if i had to pick a spot right now um it would be right in front of the versailles or persephone garden like if you're looking standing in our great room looking through the great room doors having it exactly centered out in that but you're gonna have horses out there i know but if like we weren't gonna have horses and i we just the pool was the thing yeah you know i would put it right out there with a pool house right behind it with like rows of skinny trees yeah and then like chaise lounges lined up it'd be so oh it'd be so pretty that's where I would put it. I can't picture it in an area back here. Yeah. It seems like there's going to end up being too much stuff. 
and I want to keep things a little bit more simple yeah. and like have a wildflower meadow or something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aaron hates my idea. <laughs> no, I don't hate them. I just... Who would like to see a wildflower meadow? I need you to draw it out. Here's what it is, is that uh, I feel like in your, in your mind, the edges are all like uh, blurred and vin like vignetting, you know, when it's, it's like you can't actually see how it connects with anything else. But to me, that's the most important part. It's like, okay, wildflower, great. But what is the border between the wildflower and what? And you're like, it doesn't matter. Because yeah, in your mind, it's all blurred out and that part doesn't matter. I'm like, well, that's the only part that does if you're going to actually put it in. What is the border between the wildflower and what? Like trees or... Maybe. Like a walking path or... Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> draw it out. Just draw out the edges though. Leave the middle blurry and just draw the edges. That's what I need. And I shut down. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my... I don't plan things out very much. <laughs> okay. Annette said, wish I lived closer to all of you, including pa Bethany and Paul. Can onions be winter sown? Yes, Absolutely. You can absolutely sow uh, onions winter sown method because they are a cold season crop. So that'd be perfect. Nellie said, where did you find Bethany and Paul? They are a great team, hardworking, get the job done. I think I heard you say they aren't husband and wife. Nope. Uh, but are they related in another way? Yep. They're brother and sister. So uh, we were looking for some just temporary help. This is the first year we had the South Garden when it was just raw pasture and the year that I popped the cut flower garden just out in the middle of of it like we just picked a spot and thought yep let's just grow stuff here um so Aaron you put feelers out right like uh, some email group or something about like hey we need somebody who could build a fence oh yeah because we needed t posted t posts pounded in and ranch panels put up we thought we could do it but yeah. it just it was going to take us too much time and so I think Bethany hooked yeah. us up with Paul because right. she know, knew he was kind of looking for some work and so uh, we met him through Bethany we had already known Bethany we did not know Paul so Paul came in and he we just hired him temporarily to build the fence and he did such a good job and he was so pleasant that we were like hey if you are free we have this and this we and this got a list of we projects we still never really like well not never but it took a while for it to be like a thing. He just kind of kept coming and yeah. we kept giving him things to do because mm -hmm. it was the time of year. Right. It was spring and there was just a million things to do. Yeah. And so I just kept giving him lists and you were giving him lists and we were like, yeah, if you got more time. And then finally mm -hmm. it was like, do you want to just keep coming? Yeah. <laughs> like make it official? Yeah. But it was like a month later, maybe, that we mm -hmm. made it official. I don't remember when it was. Yeah, boy, we lucked out. And then eventually, uh, we talked to Bethany about, because I think we reached back out to Bethany and said, hey, we might be looking for somebody part-time to come in and help. Um, and then she volunteered for that part. Like, I'll come in and do that. Um, so she, it's really nice because uh, she's got... Uh, a lot of kids and she's also really active like at church and stuff like that and so I kind of just let her call her own shots she'll just text me and be like well oh, we're just you know the morning's gone kind of bad if there's anything pressing you know I can come in this afternoon or whatever and I'll just like, nope stay home that's more important um, or you know I don't know it's just it's worked out really nicely because if she has something on her schedule because she's like our main watering gal in the hot part of the season if she knows she's not going to be in she makes sure somebody gets it yeah. done and it's not me she makes sure it's covered by somebody else and that's the biggest part is as long as a job gets yeah, done yeah i don't it's care like, as yeah. long as the plants get water or i know about it so that i can water them then it doesn't matter like you know i i understand that your home life is more important than your work life for sure when it comes down to it so i don't know it's just been such a good it's been such a good fit and they're both so pleasant and hardworking. Uh, Lisa said, possibly a stupid question. When the large magnet picks up the scrap metal, why doesn't it pick up the trailer too? It wasn't a magnet. It was a claw. Oh, it was. Yeah. I thought it was a magnet. Well, I think Dang. that they do magnets. Do but, they? Uh, yeah. User said, how old is Samantha? She talks very clear. What a cutie. She is three. <laughs> Just, just turned three. Just turned three. She came down. I was sitting in our upstairs living room this morning having my coffee and uh, <clears throat> everybody was still asleep. And she came out because the, the garbage man came through and he collected the dumpster. But I think there was something heavy in there and it made a big loud noise and she can't could hear her stirring and she came down. That was very loud of me. Yeah. That was very loud of me. <laughs> she was like kind of. Yeah. Traumatized by it. Uh, but she did. There are moments where I'm just like. She just chattered, yeah. like chatty. So cute. When she's telling stories. Yeah. And she's trying to search for the words. Mm -hmm. So she'll tell you like four times until she finds or the she right goes, way to say it. Mm. 
like her little rage like yeah. oh i couldn't figure it out um claudia said how long do you leave the heat mat under your seeds i know you remove the dome once the seeds germinate but i'm not sure about the heat dome and heat are removed at the same time once everything is germinated everything's looking good that's when they both vamoose okay last video for this week was a diy ivy wreath topiary plus planting snapdragon and delphinium seeds so i had uh, used uh, ivy topiary picked up at a garden center near us uh, recently they're so beautiful and i i understand why topiaries cost a lot because it takes time it takes somebody's somebody's time and work to get a plant trained into a certain shape but i had some ivy on hand some four inch ivy i picked up last fall for a project that i didn't end up doing so i thought well this is a project that i could do a lot cheaper and i think we could walk through the process together and um, sure enough that wire hanger was the perfect form the re the ivy was perfect and i know that not all the time can you find ivy that's that big but i bought it when it was that big um it's just been sitting in our greenhouse kind of dormant it hasn't put on active growth so it kind of depends on what time of year you're you know picking it up but a five dollar ivy plant and a, a coat hanger and we had a beautiful wreath topiary and then i went through some details on delphiniums and snapdragons uh planted about half the amount of snapdragons that i did last year so only three flats of snapdragons this year instead of six. Good for you. I know. I know. I'm just being so controlled in my <laughs> seed starting. Also, I decided I'm not going to pull dahlias out at all until I'm ready to plant. And I'll divide if they need it. If they're small clumps, I'm not going to even mess with dividing. Um, we're just do it all in one fell swoop. Not to mess around with pre-sprouting and then having to pot them up and having them undergrow light space or taking up room in the greenhouse. No, no more for this year anyway. Mahel, Majel, Majel Katz, revealing trade secrets. Do you ever feel fear for your life? Is there a garden mafia? What, like showing how to do a topiary? Oh. <laughs> I, I don't fear for my life. <laughs> uh, Takuna Takuna said, what is your last frost date to start these so early? April 29th is our average last frost date. I usually will fudge that a little bit because we've got a little extra time uh, having the greenhouse that has some heat in it uh, and that way, and I don't mind also potting them up, certain things. Um, we planted our delphiniums in this case in a little bit of a larger seed tray or the cells are a little bit larger so that I hopefully don't have to pot those up. But there's some things like all the geraniums this week, I need to work on getting those all out of the packs and potting them up. And I like to do that. It's kind of a fun process to me, not for everything, but for some things. Uh, Barbara said, thanks for this video, so much info. Do you have a dahlia seed video? I'm going to check. I don't know if I have a specific one. I've started them from seed. Um, they are prone to spider mites. So keep that in mind. So they're a hard one. If you deal with spider mites, especially in a more intense environment like greenhouse growing, they can get it a little bit easier. So keep your eyes, eyes peeled for that. Uh, we'll probably do a video when I start the dahlia seeds this year, but it's amazing, you guys. They come up so fast from seed and they just form this most beautiful plant. And then that first year when you dig them up, they're just this little clump of baby tubers. But it's just amazing how quickly that crop grows. Tamara said, so exciting to be seed starting. Thanks for the wonderful idea with the ivy. Question, I see your wheat grinder is out in the studio. Do you find you're not a fan of grinding your own wheat? Uh, my wheat grinder is out here because that's where I ground all of my wheat this fall. And I ground it all in one fell swoop because I wanted to for the video. I wanted to see how much yield of flour. And I know that's not the ideal way to do it. You're supposed to, you know, mill it in little batches as you need it for cooking. It stays the freshest that way. Um, but anyway, I don't really find a need for that in our kitchen right now. I did buy a bag of wheat. Was it hard red wheat? I think I bought. So I do have that inside. I just haven't made the switch to put the mill inside yet. I should. I do like grinding my own wheat though. It's super fun. Sunflower Flight said, will you be growing ranunculus and anemones for your cut flower garden this year? Yes, and I'm also not potting up any of those. I wanna do it at a time where I can pre-sprout them inside and then I can just plant them straight out in the garden. I will probably provide cover for them, so I need to make a, a I need to search my stuff and see if I've got enough of the hoops and all of that to make sure that I've got enough. I always plant a whole 60 foot by three foot row of ranunculus. And then I think last year it was like 40 some feet, almost 50 feet. It was way too many. So maybe we'll pare that down as well. Uh, Florida said, I'd love to do this with my ivy, which is unruly, but I don't have a wire clothes hanger. Is there something I can purchase instead? Who doesn't have a wire clothes hanger? Like, uh, 
go, you probably have something that needs to be dry cleaned. Yeah. Take it to the dry cleaner in a couple days, pick it up and you got yourself however many, you know, things you yeah. took in there. That's how many hangers you have now. You could probably buy a wire hanger, wire hangers. Does it like dollar stores have those? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Or you could, you know, some people talk about using a wreath form, but the beauty of the wire or of the wire hanger is you've got that hook that you can uh, bend around a stick and that's what holds it into the container. So unless you figured out a way, you know, to wire it to the wreath form, it would be kind of floppy. Yeah. I find that having that, um, that hook really helps anchor it. Um, little Leo said, just love you guys. Watch you every day. Question. I tried using the vermiculite last year, but found it difficult to tell when to water as I couldn't see or feel the soil directly. What are your hints on this? I do agree that it can make it difficult to gauge water level just by his sight, but I just feel it. I mean, if the vermiculite feels moist still, then that means the soil beneath it's still moist. Uh, usually I can figure that out just by touch. And that is it for today's recap video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great start to your week and we will see you in the next one. Bye.